Thank you for joining me on another floppy deep dive. I started the year off right with another retro pickup and today I'm going to be doing another retro deal or dud. I'll show you everything I got in this pickup and test to ensure everything works. Then at the end I will tell you exactly how much I paid and you tell me in the comments. Was it a retro deal? Or dud. PCB Way sponsors this video. So why do I have PCB Way support me? Because they do an incredible job. The PCB manufacturing assembly is fantastic. They have an excellent quality assurance for their boards. They also have speed. PCB Way is quick on the turnaround time to give you excellent service and exclusive customer support. And they solve problems quickly. PCB Way also has a great community. I enjoy these cool projects out there that the community shares so anyone at any skill level can do these projects. PCB Way also listens to feedback from their customers and that's what I like about PCB Way. First we're going to look at the Commodore 1701 monitor I added to my collection. I have three 1702 monitors but this is my first 1701. And what is the difference between 1701 and 1702? They're virtually identical. They have the same specs, tube, inputs, casing, and manufacturer. The only real difference is the 1701 is older, 1982 to early 83, and the 72, uh, 1702 is late 83. And that's the biggest deal. The 1701 shipped with a five pin composite video cable instead of the eight pin Luma Chroma cable that was in the box. And I wish it had a door to cover the knobs, but I could purchase a 3D printed one online to fix that issue. Or if someone would like to send me a door they 3D printed, I would appreciate it. But let's hook it up to a Commodore 64 and see if this monitor works. Let's try to load something up. Got some flicker into it. Let's try some game on it. See if the sound works on it. Well, it sounds like the sound works just fine. This is an original way of exploding fists, not a cracked copy like most of you all have seen. UXB released it here in the United States. Nice colors. Everything looks really good on that screen. <laughs> But I say so far for the 1701 success. So thumbs up to that. Now let's try out the Commodore 64 that I picked up. All right, so we're gonna be following this right here and looking to see. I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up. This Commodore 64 has definitely seen better days. This thing is filthy. So this is what I picked up here. And this is what we're gonna be trying and seeing. I'm gonna hook it up with a new power supply. So let's see if we can get this thing to work. Turn the power on. And the moment of truth. It's activating the drive. We've got screen. We've got ready. All that looks good. Let's see if we can do any kind of commands. Uh-oh. A's not working. Keyboard is not working all the way. So something's going on. It's a hit and miss with this keyboard. But definitely the one, no matter how many times I hit it, is not working. Two, one, two, three. This isn't working. A is working a little bit better got to be some dirtiness in there. We're going to have to open up this, probably check out the keyboard. But luckily, I have a bunch of Commodore 64 keyboards. So let's try it off another keyboard and see if it works. But first, let's open this up just to see what's inside and just see how dirty it is. But they did a little tweak on it. See the red button on there? That's just a reset button, it looks like, that they put on this keyboard built into it, which is actually a really good idea. I always hate it switching it off and on, but it's just a little red reset. So let's see if I see anything when I open this up. Hmm. I see that the shift key here isn't soldered on and it's disconnected. The shift lock. Uh, I definitely need to get in there and look. I'm sure this has been worked on a lot since it's had tweaks done to it. But what I'm going to do 
is just take this keyboard off and go grab me another keyboard and see if it's just this keyboard or something with the chips or see what it is. So let's test it with a different one. So let's look in here, give it a look at my PCB. Here's where the reset mod is going in. Some of the memories that are socketed that looks like they've replaced. A few of the other ones that are socketed. But I'm going to try a different keyboard on here and see if that fixes the problem. So I grabbed another keyboard off another Commodore. This is the one that I picked up the other day that the memory was bad in it. And I've yet to fix it. So I'm taking that keyboard top. And I'm just going to see if I can attach this one on here. If it's just the keyboard that's messed up or maybe a chip or something. And we'll go from there. So let me get this all plugged in here. All right, so I've got this other keyboard on top of here. This case isn't fitting it perfectly like the other one did. But I'm going to turn this on. And let's see if everything works. So it's definitely just the keyboard on that Commodore 64 that's messed up because this keyboard's working perfectly. Let's try to load up a game on here. So everything is working perfectly on this Commodore 64. So the only thing that I'll need to update is just figure out what's wrong with that keyboard. And maybe that's another video. But with the right keyboard on top, this everything seems to be working. Games load up. Everything's playing. So we got a healthy Commodore 64 here that just needs a little keyboard cleaning or something that I need to do to it. But we'll figure that out. So another item that I picked up in this is the 1541 drive. And just like everything else that came, it is just completely filthy and gross. Came with no cords. None of this came with cords and power, but I didn't care because I had plenty of cords and power. He's got road on here. Main number one, maybe it says main two. Hard to read. I'm sure this was part of his BBS and him running with this Commodore. So I'm going to swap out my working 1541 here and hook this one up and see if this thing works. So everything came on, but while testing it, I it was having trouble reading the floppy. I got a directory, partial directories, and then when I went to load a file, it would just bang the head. So I decided I'm just gonna open it up and see if the head's dirty and clean it. And yeah, that head is filthy, just filthy. So we're gonna clean that. I need to go get me some Q-tips and alcohol. <laughs> Try this again. Got a nice read. Try to load the first thing on the disc. And there you go. Legend of the Amazon women up and running. So it works just fine. It was just a dirty head. So all the hardware pieces that I got in this pickup works perfectly uh, for the age. Well, besides this keyboard part, but that's an easy fix. Like I said, I have extra keyboard top anyway of different Commodores. So Everything chip-wise, when I those all work, I'm uh, happy with that. Nothing that I have to fix there. We'll see what we can do on the keyboard, clean it all up. But the drive with just a dirty head. This here, obviously I'm going to get the door and replace it, but happy. The screen looks good. Everything looks good on there. The sound plays just fine. So this 1701 is working. My Commodore 64 is working and my 1541 is working so let's look at the different software that i picked up so this is what really caught my eye when i saw this collection uh i didn't have red storm rising and the box looks really good shape for the original and it had micro pros on there and so this was just a huge bonus to get this included with this three pieces of hardware that i picked up and i'll show you everything that's in there it has the original floppy that came with it, it also has the um, product guide, the manual, basically everything that was included in here has the keyboard overlay that came with the game to make it a little bit easier with the commands, included the manual that comes with it, and also it had, of course, most important thing, the floppy. Now we got to test this floppy and see if it works or not, and we'll be doing that too to make sure that this game even comes on. So I'm going to keep that out. 
so we could try it out on our new hardware. Also came with this cool product guide, which I thought was really cool going through here. And one of the things I didn't realize is that they sold these posters just like I made for my retro room back in the day. And I didn't realize they had these posters. So I thought that was really cool. They also sold t-shirts, which I thought was really cool too, that I wasn't aware of. It looks like they just got the programmers to pose to do it. But anyway, really cool. I thought this product guide was like an awesome little nice touch. I'm going to go ahead and load up the Red Storm Rising floppy and see if it works. So let's give this one a shot. And it actually looks great. So it looks like everything's working just great on this floppy. So let's try the other game. The other one that I picked up that I thought was really cool was a game that I don't never played before. And it's called Overrun. And it's by SSI. And it's always cool when you get these SSI strategy games. I haven't played it. But again, looks like to be in really good shape, this box. And I love it. And uh, everything, just like the other game, is included in here. Has the SSI Overrun briefing guide here, the manual. Of course, it has the floppies. Crucial floppies, which we'll be testing to see if they work, has the overrun manual in here. And again, another catalog for the SSI games. Perfect. We got two cool original games still in their boxes, got the hardware. Everything seems to be working just fine. Now I'm going to tell you how much all this cost me. So for the monitor, the Commodore 64, the 1541, and these two games, I paid $150. And I didn't even have to leave my hometown. I actually just met them right here in my hometown for $150. I got all that. And I think that's just a steal. I've seen where some people's paid $100 just for the monitor itself or just for the Commodore 64. Or, and then just to have everything and then throw in the bonuses of these two games complete in the box. Just a sweet, sweet deal. It's a pretty sweet deal, right? So you tell me down in comments. Was it a retro deal or dud? So don't stop there. YouTube will recommend more videos. Check out those two for, for more retro goodness. Nobody knows you like I do, and I know you do not want to back out on a sweet deal like this. Do you? Huh?